Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another manga chapter review. I am the rat, and this is the Rat's Nest. I'm joined as always by Kyle. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. And Trevor is here in spirit, uh, supporting us from the grave. So, Kyle, One Piece chapter 1090. Uh, do we have a chapter title? Kizaru. It's just titled Kizaru? Yeah, it's just titled Oh, there Kizaru. it is. Yep. No, I see that. I wasn't on like the title page. Yep. There's no, I Kizaru, see that. and then the picture request is uh, a black cat and Kuro quietly reading. I bring that up specifically because I like Cat and Kuro. It's been a while since we've seen him since since Maple Village or whatever it was called. Maple yeah. Syrup Village, you know. Uh, but this was a pretty fun chapter. Uh, obviously, kind of sucks that we had a break before this chapter and then a break after this chapter. You know, I love Oda. I hope that he is healthy. Uh, it does not make the constant breaks any easier. Uh, the bi-weekly devil hitting as much as it does with One Piece. Hey, hey, look, um, look, 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 Would you rather that or what's happening to Black Clover? True, true. This is much better. This is much, much better. If you know, you know. If you don't know, Black Clover is going into a different magazine, so we will publish one chapter every three months, which is kind of insane. But we're here talking about One Piece. Yeah. This, well, well overall, what do you think about this chapter, Kyle? Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the chapter. Uh, it's, I'm just, sorry, I'm trying to like find out wording here. It's weird, and we'll get there when we get there, that we didn't get a, like, not that I'm complaining, look, I'm happy that we're moving forward and that we don't have to, like, watch all, like, the little fighting against the Seraphims. It's still just weird to me that it, that was just kind of skimmed over and, like, essentially off-screened. Like, the Seraphim fighting was just done. But, uh, it's, it's really cool having Luffy interact with Saturn, like, just one of the Elders. Yeah, right? I mean, like that—that's—that's that's just an insane thing to finally have happened after how many years? Uh, I like Kizaru. So seeing Kizaru talk to Saturn near the end was pretty cool, and then getting to see the start of it, and then the funny thing of Luffy freaking out about someone strong being there—that was—that was funny. Not because it was just funny in universe, but because of Twitter's reaction. It's it's humorous. Yeah, no, uh, the the Seraphim's kind of being off screen. Like I completely understand. Um, I think that if it was Wano, we would have gotten to see it. Because yeah. if you remember, after Wano finished, we got the, the Void Month. And that was Oda figuring out like his roadmap for the final saga and how we wanted to do stuff. I think that it was probably um, a consequence of having to shorten stuff. Because if I think if he got into that, that's at least like three months of chapters, right? Uh, we're just de depicting all that kind of stuff, and so of just like of just unimportant fighting. I think yeah, I, it feels like, like what Oda's doing now is prioritizing fights that do matter, even if they are yeah. of like lesser scale, like more more narratively important moments. It feels like he's zeroing in on now. And like again, I don't I don't mind the fact that he skimmed over them. I mean, we already knew essentially the resolution. None of the straw hats were gonna die in those fights. Like we, we you can generally tell what's gonna happen. And I'm happy that it was like I'm happy about it ultimately, but it, it just does feel weird that it's like, yeah, a, a moment like that where you know Frankie got like half turned to stone, uh watching like the four of them up in the top, like Luffy, Zoro, uh Taku and like Luchi fighting two of them, just all getting off screen, just just kind of odd. I guess Luffy's finally tapping into uh, uh, what makes the the most powerful pirate in One Piece so powerful. Do you know who the most powerful pirate in One Piece is, Kyle? Um, is is a is a trick question? It's off screen Blackbeard. <laughs> off screen Blackbeard is easily the strongest pirate in One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's Luffy tapping into that. So <laughs> what makes him so strong? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, okay, okay. How many fights did he win off screen? All of them. <laughs> so okay, so 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 real real quick tangent before you yeah, get into the proper. Fight. You got you got Ace. He, Ace, he beat yeah, Ace off of screen. Course. He beat the Whitebeard Pirates off screen. He beat Law off screen. He beat Hancock off screen. He beat Kobe off screen. <laughs> so so that's five major fights that he won off screen. Oh, and I'm probably forgetting stuff. <laughs> I didn't technically, really think about he that. Got, yeah, technically, no, he, he got Whitebeard's Devil Fruit off screen, too, because he put the, the thing over that. You know, that's, that's the yeah, no off screen. Blackbeard is the strongest pirate in one piece. <laughs> I mean, yeah, even the others like Shanks, at least Shanks on screen, the kid. <laughs> I 
at least you had the dignity to on screen him. That's true. That's yeah, imagine, true. imagine being Law, one of the, a fan favorite character, dare I say, who's done a lot in these past couple of arcs to just get off screen by Blackbeard. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> Didn't think about how many yeah. times he's just off screen. I saw I saw someone say that. Dude. I can't remember where. It was like off screen Blackbeard is the most powerful pirate. I'm like, you know, no, that's really accurate. <laughs> Because like right. honestly, I would I would like to see how all those stuff, all those fights played out in another timeline. But yeah, we're, yeah. we're here for we're here for Kizuru, the chapter. Yes. So you just so, want to get right into it proper? Yes. Let's get right into it. So Luffy is talking to Saturn. Yada yada. We have Vegapunk. Uh, we see TV going like really Luffy because he's like, oh yeah, we we uh, we we kidnapped Vegapunk. You know that kind of thing. You see that he's talking to Saturn. Uh, but um, and the the five elders kind of uh, and the five elders are listening in and him talking to Saturn and so is Morgan's. Uh, and so Robin kind of hangs up the claw call and she gets mad at Luffy. Uh, she's like, information's weapon, don't hand weapons to your enemies. Uh, and then Saturn is like, okay, whatever. The connection's terminated. And he goes, there are three things we must retain. York's safety, the punk record's brain, and the power plant that creates the mother flame. Everything else is disposable. Some Navy guy is like, oh, what about the children? And he's like, I hate the children. Uh, screw them. They're nothing more than insects. Uh, they'll always breed more to make up for any loss. Uh, then we see York crying, talking about O'Hara. Uh, she, she says, no, I mean, I'm going to tell the, on you to the five elders, yada, yada. We get to see a big crew of everyone. And we get to see. So this daddy is the first big. Bullying. <laughs> daddy, daddy, the, the, the Nami's bullying me. Dude, I wish Nami would bully me. Anyways, we learn our big first piece of information here, right? Is we mm -hmm. learn that Shaka and Pythagoras are straight up dead. Like, like no, no middle ground. No, no, they, they, they killed them. They're dead. Um, and that's like, okay. You know, I, I, I think we, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but death has becoming been becoming uh, more common in one piece, right? Uh, it, it's yeah. becoming, you know, you know, obviously back to the funny days of Alabasta and funny Pell, right? Um, but uh, now it's yeah. it's becoming, I mean, to say relatively common, I don't think that that's wrong. No, I mean, I think death is Wano, more of a Hawkins now. is dead, right? Uh, thinking, you know, in you have uh, Kaido and Big Mom might be dead. You also have Izo and a lot of the other someone soldiers. Someone else fighting. died. Izo and someone else who I can't remember, um, but they died. I can't remember. No, it's no. Died from the Straw Hats. <laughs> that's true. That's it was uh, Shura Doji. It was it was him. It was another one of the scabbards. It was mm -hmm. Shura Doji died. Uh, you know, recently you have uh, Cobra died, just straight up, straight up dead. Uh, you know, you have the entire island of Lulucia dead. You know, death is becoming more common in One Piece. Uh, but it's still a bit shocking, I think, because uh, I, I liked Shaka because he's funny Daft Punk man. Uh, but I guess whenever Daft Punk gets shot in the face, even they don't survive. Yeah. Uh, so to get back into the rest of the chapter, we see that Luchi is reporting stuff to the Gorose, and later we get confirmation of that. Um, we see that the Seraphim are caught and they're being held in the basement, right? Um, and, you know, they're like, oh, whatever. We see that uh, uh, S Snake, so Hancock Seraphim, released their hold on the released her hold on the Straw Hats because Luffy thought that she was Hancock. And <laughs> Hancock's genetically Hancock is just, I guess, genetically attracted, attracted to, Luffy, to Luffy. Yeah, to that was weird. She, she she fawned over him and then released it, which was like, okay, that's funny. That 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 that's pretty darn funny. It's just, you know, funny Luffy not realizing. You know, I guess he doesn't see race. He's not like Zolo. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's so true. That's so true. Um, yeah. So. So this is so specifically what Jinbei says here about how even the actual Hancock, a real nasty piece of work, can't turn down a request from Luffy. How funny that her seraphim is the same way. And Vegapunk goes, yes, the information transmitted through bloodline elements when producing clones is really most fascinating. So it's not purely genes. It's bloodline elements. Uh, so that's, you know, how S. Snake is still attracted to Luffy. And also, theoretically, how S. Croc or whatever crocodile seraphim is has his scars. Okay, that's something mm -hmm. someone pointed out a while ago. Why would a clone of Crocodile have his scars unless it's like a genetic thing? Uh, so yeah, then that was also, the theory, like, okay, Crocodile is a different race, or, you know, as I believe, Crocodile you, is Luffy's mom. Wait, wait, do, do you think that that's going to play into, like, um, Puma? Maybe. 
I don't know. There's, I mean, a, there's a lot of questions with Kuma specifically because a lot of that. I think that we'll go back and see some of that because all the stuff happening with Bonnie and Kuma is really yeah, all that important. happened off screen too. That was really so. I feel like this was more off screening than like would be even normal for One Piece. You know? So, yeah. Um, I think I mean, we're just kind of going back and seeing everything. Uh, but regardless, we just see. Um, well, not even then. I mean, it's just like, oh, gee, thanks for undoing all that clone Hancock. And, and like, like, we don't. Did, did he just say he's in love with me, dude? That's so true. He did. Yeah. So I don't think we're gonna go. I mean, the one big thing I feel like would 100 percent go back and see is what Bonnie saw in like the weird bubble. Was it like the bubble memory? Yeah, it was oh, like she, she, was, she was looking at her father's memories. Yeah, that was a long and long time ago. That that chapter, was. Yeah. Jeez, it's been a. It's been, dude. It's been a year since Egghead started, basically. That's damn. Uh, so that's beside the point. So they're they're talking about it. So the Frontier Dome is locked, and they don't have the passcode. Only York knows it. Uh, no one else so does. York is obviously like, I'm not. Sanji fans continue taking an L. Uh, what the only thing Sanji doing is being uh, simping for Stussy, which I understand. Uh, but at the same time, but because it's uh, Sanji. Yeah, because it's Sanji. Then we get the big reveal of we're going to Elbaf next, basically. Which I think we already knew. That's been teased up, right, uh, through a lot of different things. Uh, but specifically, Nami goes, the log post hasn't recorded the signal yet, but we still have one sturdy needle from Wano we can use. It's pointing northeast of here. And Vegapunk goes, that'd be Elbaf then. And so, obviously, Luffy and, and Usopp go kind of poggers. We I love Stussy the standing there, And Stussy is hot. Um, and they're just kind of chilling, and they're like, okay, how do we get out, right? Um... We could use the Vega Force to simply fly over the Navy's blockade, ideally, but a robot can only fly in the airspace over Egghead. Once you leave, it'll fall to the Earth. And Frankie goes, no problem. That's where we can use the Sunny's Coop to burst to fly even further. If we fly a kilometer away, none of them will be able to ca catch us. And they're like, okay, cool. We still need to activate the Frontier Dome first before that stuff does. And they're like, let's crack this thing. Never play mind games with Vega Punks. So the Vega Punks are uh, cracking the, the code set by York, uh, which no one knows. Uh, here we get to but see like, but like, hang on, hang on. Here's, here's the thing. Even if like York put it, they're all about equally as intelligent as her, so I feel like they'll get it. Yeah, and I don't think that it'll be uh, a problem. It's not a huge risk. It's, it's just, punk, right? Yeah, it's a problem, but not like the problem, because the problem comes up here in a little bit. Yeah. And so they're going to go move the ship around the back. So we get Lilith, that looks like Frankie, Luffy, and Bonnie. And Bonnie is, is in a good mood, like, we should uh, eat pizzas, and Sanji's, and Luffy's like, yeah, Sanji's cool. And Bonnie goes, he's pretty cool, huh? Good cook and a good fighter. And Luffy's like, why are you so cheerful? All of a sudden, it's weird. And she goes, yeah, I decided I won't kill Vegapunk anymore. And Luffy goes, I guess crying all night helped you feel better, huh? She goes, I wasn't crying. So she finished her memories. She doesn't hate Vegapunk anymore. Uh, so somehow, and she's also not crying anymore, so... Uh, Something in the memory. Whatever happened with her dad, it. she's come to terms with and is, is pretty <laughs> happy with it. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe like in the memory, she saw like, okay, it wasn't Vegapunk's fault. Like it was some other reason, and we still don't know why. I, I, that's that's a big mystery. I want to find out soon. Yeah, it'll be. We it'll still be don't know the origin of Devil Fruits, and I want to find that out soon too. We do, dude. Vegapunk has got to tell us eventually. And I also want to figure out how Blackbeard's gonna off-screen kill Shanks. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be crazy, dude. We're getting to El Path, and that's the first news we're getting. Hundred percent. We're gonna be like, oh boy, can't wait to step on El Bat, and it's just gonna be Blackbeard like holding the body of Shanks. And it's gonna be like, gonna be how? Like, ha ha ha. <laughs> Imagine if their fight ended with like the fight starts, and then the next chapter is just Gear Five Luffy being like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> that's true. That's true. It gets off screened. Oh my gosh! But to finish off the chapter, we see <laughs> Kizaru talking to Saturn, uh, and we see um, Saturn be like, "Frontier Dome's laser defense system. You are light. Can you get inside?" Kizaru goes, "Quite frankly, I can." But a good friend of mine is defending Vegapunk below it. Saturn goes to leap over him. He goes, "Well, that's not a very sporting thing to do when a man is making a principled stand like that. I prefer to play this one by the book." Uh, and you should know that when we attack, it will mean that countless sea beast weapons and 50 pacifistas under Centimaru's command will start sinking our ships in response. It's going to be a heavy cost for us. Um, and then so we see that, yeah, Rob Gucci sent them all the information. Uh, so they're looking for the power plant, that kind of thing. Um, if you can use the six powers, then make, make for land when the battle starts. So six powers, is that like the... Um, that was the techniques of like the air skip, finger gun, like flat yeah. dodge stuff. So basically, yeah. they're gonna like invade here, right? Or yeah, whoever like, whoever can use the six powers is gonna go like onto the land to start invading. Yeah, because the, the there's gonna be gonna there's gonna be a big battle here. 
Um, mm -hmm. We see them kind of bouncing around up top. And we see Kizaru use his fruit to get on. Uh, Centimaru notices, like, you're here, all man. Pacifist is eliminate all hostiles. So the battle's beginning of uh, everyone versus. Uh, here I go, Centimaru. My defense is the world's greatest. Uh, power healers go crazy over this because Centimaru seemingly blocks a, a blow from Kizaru. Um, they go, huh, light from below. And Luffy goes, someone's here, someone's strong. So. And that's the chapter. There's a lot to talk about with that, what you just read. Yeah. So. First little thing, uh, so we knew that Kizaru had a, a backstory with Vegapunk and Centimaru, so we just kind of get to see more of his character here where he's like, I could go past that, I don't want to. Uh, you know, I'm gonna gonna honor him, you know, that kind of thing. We also see here that the battle was formally starting. Uh, Kizaru uh, and Centimaru start fighting. Centimaru gave the order for pacifistas and everything to go with the Navy. So the Navy will be attacking them, they'll be attacking the Navy, the Straw Hats are there. This is going to turn into a full-blown battle, I think, between uh, an emperor's crew and the navy, which is yep. kind of insane. Uh, I think that the matchup of Kizaru versus Luffy is what we're going to get, and I think this is where we see Luffy topple an admiral, and that's going to be kind of insane. That like after all this time, it's like we finally get to see Luffy do what he was supposed to. Like back all the way back to Marineford, like to finally get a rerun against an admiral. That's gonna I'm be really hype. looking forward to it. Well, what did you think of this whole section here? Um, starting from like what point in particular? Like Kizaru talking to Saturn. Okay, okay. Uh, definitely. I mean, like what you said, it's a, he's. I like that he's trying to kind of honoring Sentamaru in a way, like his sentiment, where it's like because that's isn't he like his uncle? Uh, I, think. I don't think so. I, I think they're related in some way where he goes, yeah, I can, but a good friend of mine's defending him. I'd prefer to play it by the books. Like, it's just, you know, I, I, like, I'll, I'll, I'll honor his, like, fight. I also really, for no particular reason, on page 16, I just like that drawing of Centimario where he's like, you're finally here, old man. And it's no, like the, half, the shading is really shaded. cool. It's good shading. And then my favorite part about this is Luffy reacting. And all, all of the Twitter power scalers went fucking nuts over this, apparently, from what I've seen. That's where true. They're, like, I I personally don't understand why power scalers have to make a hassle out of literally everything every time a chapter comes out. I mean, it's just like, yeah, Kizaru is strong. I mean, what do you what do you want? What do you want to say? Kizaru is strong. People, I think the main comparison I've seen, right, is Luffy saying this versus Luffy's reaction to Green Bull back on Wano, where he's just kind of leisurely watching everything take place. And so power yeah, scalers Green are saying Bull. like, oh, you know, Green Bull being weak or, you know, Kizaru being strong. I would say personally, Kizaru is probably stronger than Green Bull, uh, but at the yeah. same time, Green Bull got dealt a very dirty hand with how Oda introduced him, uh, with what I kind of think really was, in hindsight, just an ad for Film Red with Shanks being there. Uh, I I really kind of feel like that was what that was. Uh, so I think Green Bull got dealt a, a dirty hand. I think we're gonna get to see him. You know, I'm not a Green Bull agenda pusher. Those definitely exist. Uh, I'm not one of them. Um, but at the same time. I'm not about to underestimate the man either. He's an admiral. He's going to be very strong. Oh, he uh, is. But I, I the thing that I saw is, is putting the two... PTSD, probably. Yeah. Putting the two reactions into uh, comparisons, right? With Green Bull seeing Luffy's reaction, the situation was already taken care of. He was already leaving, right? There was no threat to Luffy whatsoever there. Here, Luffy is directly like, uh-oh, he's kind of caught off guard by it a little bit. He's directly in it. That kind of thing. Those are two very different situations. And also, as someone said, me when the author wants to add tension to an upcoming fight, that's going to be one of the biggest in the entire series. Um, I would yeah. say, I mean, ultimately, Luffy versus an admiral. I don't know. It depends. If he solos the admiral, it's bigger than Luffy versus Kaido. Um, if he gets some help, then I might call Luffy versus Kaido bigger. Uh, just because that's what made Luffy an emperor, really, was him beating Kaido. Uh, but him beating an admiral would be an insane feat. Especially Kizaru, the last of the original admirals. Uh, which, you know, say what you will about whether that gives them an advantage over Fujitora or Ryokugyo. Uh, but I, you know, right, you know, you, you know. I know. You know, yeah. No, I think that uh, power scaling is uh, is funny. That's why I love it. I love power. You know me. I'm a huge power scaling guy. I love power scaling. 
I'll power scale I'm anything. I power scale right. berserk. You'd know him power scales berserk. I power scale berserk. I think it's dumb sometimes. Like, yeah, L Luffy's caught up because you know Kizaru's strong. Kizaru, maybe he's also like having you know memories from Marineford, where he's like, "Damn, I got my ass trounced in Marineford by one of these guys." Now I think he's definitely on the even playing field. No, I think I mean, he can definitely take any of the admirals. So, like, in the grand scheme of things, right, I would say I do think Yonkos individually are probably stronger than admirals. So, I mean, there's also that to consider. Like, Luffy Luffy did just take down Kaido, like, one of the guys who was like, I'm him in the verse. He took Kaido down. Granted, it was a very high extreme diff, but he still took he still beat Kaido. I think part of the thing with, like, emperors versus admirals, right, is that all the admirals, except for Fujitoa, is, are Logias. And mm. Logias are just inherently worse at the highest level. We haven't really seen um, a true highest level Logia user yet. We've seen Paramecias with Big Bomb. And kind of Luffy until he was a Zoan, right? We've seen Zoans very clearly with Kaido and Luffy, right? Zoan yeah, and, and the Zoan Elders. Top tier of the verse, right? Yeah, Emu and, and the, and the Gorosei. Um, but think about it. There is one time that off screen we have seen max potential Logias. And it completely transformed and destroyed the entirety of an yeah, island. Those I think that people there. sleep on Logias at the highest level uh, to a major degree just because we haven't seen them. Like, you know, the age old adage of don't use Marine Ford for power scaling. <laughs> you know, yeah. what we saw there. As it, great as Marine Ford is. You know, I love Marine Ford very dearly. You can't use it for power scaling. Um, it's, yeah. Definitely I think more that like seeing high, I think that. Luffy versus Kizaru is going to be a great chance to see the true highest level. How does a highest level Logia user fight, and how does that work? Right? Against... You think you think that Kizaru is gonna like have an awakened fruit? Well, absolutely, as an awakened fruit, he's had it for who knows how many years at this point. If it's not awakened, how you know? Pfft, how's he an admiral? Right? That's true. Well, no, what I thought it was was like whenever. Um, Aokiji and Akainu fought on the island. They awoken their like they awoken their fruits on the island. I don't think they. I think they already had their fruits awakened. Oh well, then yeah. I mean then yeah. An awakened like high ceiling awakened Kizaru versus you know Gear Five Luffy. That's gonna be cool. It's gonna be insane. I think. It, I think it's gonna. If if you're if you're an admiral agenda pusher, I think it's gonna help you out a lot uh, to see to see an admiral at this level. Uh, to see an admiral at full potential, I think it's it's gonna yeah, it's gonna help out a lot. But it's gonna be awesome. We'll just have to see in the future. So if you're this far in the video, then obviously the thumbnail likes. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling us what your favorite part of this chapter was. Thank you all for watching. We hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye.